Hey guys, it is Sarah Shoemaker, and I am here to welcome you to your first day of Chem 100, Chemistry for Life Sciences. So I'm really sorry that I can't be there in person. I know this palm trees behind me make it look like I'm in this wonderful tropical vacation, but I assure you it's not a happy event, and I am sweating like crazy out here and for making this video for you guys. So by the end, if I'm dripping, you know what it is. So all of you should have one of these orange packets in front of you. If you're in Saranac Lake, hopefully there's a proctor there who has it and is passing them out. In Malone, they should have been left in the room on a front table somewhere. So if you haven't grabbed one yet, go ahead and just look for these orange folders somewhere in the front of the room and help yourself to one. So in it contains all of the important stuff you need to know for this class besides the actual chemistry. The first thing being the syllabus. So the syllabus contains information about me, how to contact me, this is my email address, my office hours and where my office is. If I'm so I'm in Saranac Lake 4 days a week. I'm in Malone 1 day a week. So as a video conference class, you will not always see me on the screen like this. I will be there but only half the time. So half the time I'll be in Saranac Lake on Tuesdays. I'll be teaching from Saranac Lake, excuse me, and on Thursdays I'll be teaching from Malone. So I'll travel between the two campuses and I'll basically Skype our lecture to the opposite campus. So you all will still come to class in the same spot on your respective campuses on Tuesdays and Thursdays and I will either be on the video or I will be in front of you. So when I'm in Malone, I do uh, stay a couple hours after class to have office hours there. So if you want to see me outside of class for help or just, you know, want to chat, you can find me in the Learning Assistance Center on the Malone campus. The required materials for the class, you do need the textbook. This is what it looks like. It's the third edition of the textbook. And this textbook in particular does change from edition to edition, so I do recommend getting this current third edition. Um, another thing you need for the class is an online learning homework platform. You need access to it. It's called Sapling Learning. It's not um, part of the textbook, so you don't get an access code with your textbook like you do for other online homework systems and other classes. You have to purchase it separately, which means you cannot get it in the bookstore and you cannot use financial aid deferment. It's $42 and you buy it directly online. Um, the next handout in your orange packet is this one here, and it is the instructions for registering for Sapling Learning. So your first homework item tonight is to go home and get signed up and registered for Sapling. So just follow these instructions to the T. Make sure that you, that you choose when you select your courses that you select Chem 100. I also teach Chem 101 at the college, which is a higher level chemistry class. You do not want to sign up for that one, so make sure you choose the correct chemistry class when you register. If you don't have the $42 right now, or maybe you're not sure you want to stay in this class, you're thinking about dropping it, um, you can still register and use the 14-day free trial period where you get access for two weeks and then they shut you out or you have to pay to continue. So any work you do during that free trial period is saved when you pay, so you won't lose anything. So it's a great way to just get in and get started, get your feet wet. I like to have everyone do that as soon as possible because sometimes there's technical difficulties and we need to troubleshoot those early on before you start getting behind. So first item on the to-do list tonight, get registered for Sapling. So what does Sapling look like? Well, I have this window here. Uh, let me switch to student role so you can see what it looks like on your end. So this is the homework website. Um, these green links right here I want to call your attention to. When you register tonight, I would suggest doing this first practice assignment. All it is is it just shows you how to use the tools. So when you submit your answers, if it's a math answer, if you have to write a formula, you have to write a subscript or a superscript, there's, um, or if you're picking elements off the periodic table, there's just, you know, little, little things about the system to learn and you can practice it there, get used to it. Then you can launch into homework one. Now, you, we obviously haven't gone over anything yet. If you don't know any of the answers to homework one, then don't do it yet. 
but you can go in and check it out, see the kind of questions you're going to be expected to answer. So each homework assignment has 25 to 30 questions, and you can do them out of order. So if I click here on question 20, some of them are sorting questions, some are math or balancing equations. There's all different, there's multiple choice, there's select all that apply. Um, so let's say this is a sorting question. So you sort the answers into the boxes you want and then you click check answer all right if it's wrong it'll give you some feedback which is basically like hints on how to proceed and then you can try again so every time you try again you lose five points on the question so you each question is worth a total of a hundred points and so now I can, the maximum score I can get on this one is 95 points, which is not bad. So I can move stuff around um, and I check my answer and it's still wrong, okay? So you still get more feedback. You can keep trying again and again. You lose five points each time, so I guess you can try it 20 times before you have a zero. The thing I tell you I, that I advise students not to do is not to click give up. If you give up, then it shows you what the solution is and then you have a zero for that question. So I tell people use it very sparingly on problems that you're really, really struggling with. But for the most part, if you're struggling with a problem, then what I recommend doing is to contact me. So I'm uh, going to this grading page of the syllabus. So back to the syllabus here. Under online homework, I want you to notice right here, this is my cell phone number. Okay? If you are struggling on a homework question that you're really, you just really can't get, just take a picture of it and text it to me. Uh, and I can help you troubleshoot it. It will save you the time and frustration of pulling your hair out. A lot of times when students reach that point, it's because there's a, you know, they had a typo in their work or it's some careless mistake. It's usually not that they don't understand the problem. It's usually that there's some careless mistake that they, their eyes just aren't seeing. And once I point it out, then that sets them on the right path. So um, I really, really am such a nerd, and I love helping students with chemistry over the phone. So please don't be shy about texting me. In fact, what I'd like each of you to do right now is to go ahead and pull out your phones and put my number in there and send me a text message. Tell me your name that you're in Chem 100, and I don't know, send me like a Bitmoji or a, a JPEG or something. I don't know, send me a picture, maybe not a video because that takes up too much memory space, but something to make me smile or laugh. Okay, um, so still talking about the homework. I'm stressing the homework because I think homework in chemistry and math classes in particular is so important because it's the they're both the types of classes where when you have someone in class a teacher who knows what they're talking about they explain something and it's like oh this makes so much sense this is so easy I got this then you go home and try to do it yourself and you're lost so it's really really important to practice 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 make sure that you're solid on it so homework in this class is worth 20 percent which is a really big chunk of the grade for homework in a college class but that's because I really do think it's that important and it, it also will take you some time tw sometimes 25 to 30 questions if there's a lot of math can take you a while so don't procrastinate it don't leave it to the last minute and don't be afraid to get help from me during office hours or even after hours by texting me um, another thing about the homework is that it also can be done late. So after the deadline has passed, after the due date in sapling has passed, you lose 10 points per day or 10% per day. So um, the homework deadline for our first homework assignment is September 2nd. Is that correct? I don't know. Let's check the syllabus. The last page of the syllabus this is quite the run through. Um, is the calendar for the class. I recommend ripping out that back page and sticking it front and center in your binder or your planner or whatever, wherever you look to organize yourself because I stick to it pretty uh, tightly, especially for quizzes and tests. I do sometimes bump the homework due dates around, um, but you will always be able to find them on that calendar and in Sapling itself. So the first homework is due September 2nd. If you don't do it until September 3rd, 
you will earn only, you'll earn 90% of the possible points if you do it a day late. If it's two days late, you'll earn 80% of the possible points. The point being that homework is so important, it is better late than never. So just make sure you do it. Even if you can't get it done on time, get it done. Okay. So other components of the grade. We will also have quizzes regularly in the class. And I've started doing this a couple of years ago because I found that a lot of times students understood the concepts in chemistry, but they didn't have the vocabulary down. So I would say, you know, oh, what, what are the complex carbohydrates? And a student wouldn't know what the answer was, but then when I said fiber and starch, like, oh yeah, those. So you really need to know the terminology. Um, and so almost every other class period, basically once a week, we will have a quiz. And the quiz is on the vocabulary that is in this packet here, which is also in your orange handouts. So the first quiz on chapters, don't have this memorized. The first quiz is on chapters one and two. So it's on two chapters of vocabulary. All the other quizzes will be on one chapter at a time. Um, so you want to study all these terms from chapters one and two for studying for that first quiz. It's a lot of words, but a lot of them are ones you probably already know. So don't stress over the number of words, uh, but do make sure that you know that, for example, a gram is a unit of mass, that a liter is a unit of volume, that kind of thing. Okay. So you know how to study for quizzes. They're going to be taken in an app on your cell phone, but we'll go over that in class and we'll do a practice one next time. Um, attendance is worth 5% of your grade, so just for coming to class regularly, you get 5 points. It, and uh, my attendance policy on this page here is that you know everyone gets three free absences. Attendance is required and really also very strongly encouraged, but uh, sometimes, you know, you just can't be there. Your car won't start, you're sick, you overslept, whatever. There's lots of valid reasons for missing class. If you miss class, I just ask that you please let me know. Just shoot me an email. Um, try to save the text messages for chemistry help. And, uh, and just shoot me an email if you're not going to be able to make it to class, just so I don't worry. Um, and then if you uh, miss anything, which you will if you miss class, make sure you ask your classmates for, made it, for notes or anything that you missed. They take better notes than I do a lot of the times. Your classmates will, but also I can help provide you with stuff. Um, my lecture notes will all be posted online, so you'll have access to those if you're absent. So the main thing is... Don't miss more than three classes. If you do, I will start taking away points from your grade. So you have five attendance grade points if you miss more than three absences. Uh, one more than that, it's one grade, one point off your grade. Two more after that, two points off your grade, so on and so forth, up to a maximum of five points lost. If you miss five classes, or if you miss that many classes, you're also probably missing tests and quizzes and things that can't be made up. Um, so it, you're probably not going to be doing so hot. So make sure that you are in class regularly. Um, if we have a snow day, if class is canceled, my motto is that class may be canceled but learning is not. So often I will email students an assignment. You may even still have to take your quiz from home because as I said we'll be doing it on a phone app um, slash website. So on snow days, always, always check your email for me to make sure that you don't have an assignment that's due. Um, back to the grading sections. We talked about attendance and quizzes and homework. Tests in the final exam are the other components of the grade. We'll talk a little bit more about those and the format of them as they get closer. So I'm kind of jumping around here in the syllabus. So uh, the homework is online through Sapling Learning. Uh, but there's other things that you could access online too. So our, all of the courses at the college have a sort of home page on a website called Blackboard, which is relatively new for us here at the college. So there might be some hiccups. So hopefully you can be patient with that. Um, 
but all of the resources for the class, the syllabus, the vocabulary, the study guides for the tests, all my lecture PowerPoints will all be posted to Blackboard. I'll also post a link to the Sapling Learning website so you can get there from the Blackboard page. So it's really the class home page that you can use to get to anything you need for the class. Um, if you're having trouble logging into Blackboard, you don't know your login or it's not working, that is an IT issue. And the IT's email address is helpdesk at nccc.edu. So they are the ones to contact if you're struggling with technical difficulties on the Blackboard end. I also will contact the official form of communication for this class is email. So if I have announcements to make or sometimes I might email you and say print out this worksheet that we're going to be doing in class next week, um, I will email you that. So you do need to be checking your email regularly. But also make sure that when you email me and when I email you that we're using good email etiquette. So in this day and age, you know, we're, we're all texters. I'm a texter. I'm sure you guys are texters. We're used to sending these short messages, sometimes sentence fragments with slang language or slang spelling, but that's really not professional. And email is a professional form of communication. So I've been working hard to... Um, improve my email etiquette and make sure that I always use a salutation like hello or dear and that I write in full sentences and complete thoughts and that I close it with some kind of a closer and I sign it. So do email this way. Don't email like a text message and feel free to hold me accountable and call me out if you get an email like this from me. And there's the garage door going down. Okay. Let's see, now we're, last page of the syllabus, fantastic. Um, ADA 504 accommodations, these are for students who have accommodations, like um, test, uh, extra test time, stuff like that. If you have those, let me know so that I can work on arranging them. Academic integrity is basically do your own work and don't cheat. So for online homework, I do encourage students to help each other. So there's a difference between working together and having someone else do your work or working together and copying somebody else's work. So if you have questions about where that line is, please feel free to ask and don't tow it. Um, Title IX statement and my diversity inclusion statements basically say that this college and, and our classroom is a safe environment. I want it to be a safe environment. I'm going to work hard to keep it a safe environment that everyone feels safe there, not discriminated against. Um, so if you are feeling unsafe, please let me know. Um, if you have experienced any abuse or uh, assault at the college or even not at the college, I am a mandated reporter, so I'm always here for you guys to come to me if you have any, you know, problems that you want to talk about. Um, but just know that I, while I can offer you privacy, I am mandated to report to our Title IX coordinator, who's in HR, and she will keep things confidential, but she does have to know. Um, and then lastly, my instructor's academic right here just basically says anything in this syllabus uh, can change if I see fit. Usually what changes is some of the dates in the calendar, but for the most part I'm a planner, so this syllabus really serves as my plan for the semester, so I'm pretty religious about sticking to it unless things like weather or, you know, absences on the first day of class make me have to shift things a little bit. So, that is everything I think I wanted to tell you. So in closing, let's recap what you need to do tonight. You need to um, make sure that you have your textbooks, get those ordered. Oh, another thing I didn't put on here is a calculator. You should have a calculator for the class. Just a, a basic calculator is fine. Um, okay, so get yourself a calculator and textbooks. Get registered on Sapling Learning. If you can't pay for it tonight, then just get the free trial, but get registered and start exploring it. Do the practice assignment and read the first chapter of the textbook. Um, it's just will help prime you and get you ready for uh, our first lecture when I get to class. And I'm pretty sure that's all. And I'll see you soon. Bye.